I swear I probably have the most Disney shirts out of anyone that's never been to Disney. So anyways, let's just like chat. I mean, it's 10.30. It's too early to be sleeping. I have no makeup. Let's just get to know each other a little bit, okay? First things first, I clearly don't clean my mirrors very often. I'm kidding, I actually clean them every day. I have this fat boy that slobbers everywhere. And I know that's really gross, but it happens every day because he likes to look at himself. I'm gonna do like a Q&A later. So right now I'll just give you like basic facts that you should know about all of your friends. So, my birthday is in March. I'm in Aries or Aries. I don't know how to pronounce it because I don't look into astrology. The stars say my best match is a Leo and a Sagittarius, but God probably says otherwise. Originally from Florida, Central Florida. Why everyone decided to move to the middle of a desert in Nevada, I have absolutely no clue. But we're here, I have asthma, and we're not leaving. Disclaimer, when I'm in Florida, I never have asthma, so I definitely blame it on Nevada. I'm gonna make that fact number three. I am an asthmatic. Shout out to all of my other asthmatics out there. Seriously though, it sucks, and it actually got worse the older I got. And we can blame the weather because Vegas a couple years ago decided to just become the windiest city in the world. So yeah, everybody's always so sad that I never got to go to church camp and they're like, why didn't you go to church camp when you were younger? And I'm just like, my mom sent me to asthma camp. My asthma got worse the older I got. So when I was younger, I like didn't even know I had asthma. Like, but these kids at asthma camp, it's not funny. It's actually really sad. But I mean, I was so bored because we couldn't do anything because everybody couldn't do like physical activities or they'd have an asthma attack and i was so confused because i didn't have that problem and they had to like check our lungs before we went swimming in this lake that really like wasn't i feel like it was a pool I, why did we call it a lake i swear there was cement and like railings and everything i don't even know where this camp was located because like was i in utah or like arizona or california like where the heck was this camp even located mom my most exciting experience at asthma camp was when a peacock got stuck in our little bunk rooms i don't even know what it's called we had like what are cabins cabins so first I was in the boys' cabin and they were screaming like little girls and we were making fun of them. And then I came over to our cabin and we were all on the top bunk and it wasn't so funny. Other than that, I guess like the most exciting thing was we got to sit in a helicopter. Not actually ride in one because you know, asthma. Yeah, that's my childhood in a nutshell. Fun fact number four, I had all straight A's in high school until my last quarter. My last quarter, I realized I'm not going to college. Like my whole last month, I like didn't go to some of the classes and I only took like two of my final tests. My boyfriend at the time didn't want me to go because he was scared I was gonna meet boys there, which I would have been a lot better off because I wanted to go to college so bad and I loved school. Now my memory is gone because I'm 24 years old and you know what they say, the second you turn 20, your mind just goes. So yeah, basically I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I won't go. We'll get married, have kids, and blah, blah, blah. Didn't happen. Here I am, 24, no degree, living my best life with a dirty mirror and a husky. Bye! So I always tell people I moved out when I was 14. Now this is true. I didn't move out fully equipped, but I did move out. I stayed with so many friends and like, acquaintances from church and stuff for probably like at least six months maybe even longer i refuse to go home i refuse to be in that environment and granted it's not the worst environment but my mom's ex-boyfriend just wasn't the best they fought a lot and they got drunk and were fighting and i couldn't take it but i mean eventually i just started making my own money from like little side gigs. I, nobody employed me until I was 18. Everybody had jobs at like 16. Nobody would employ me. And I had a very impressive fake resume. I had to stick with 
selling stuff on eBay and pet sitting. And I think that's all I did at the time. After high school, I had a, I rented a really nice house for two years. And then they decided they were gonna sell the house and they ripped it away from me. The housing market went up and all I could reasonably afford is a one bedroom apartment, but I love it. The sad thing is I'm only paying like $300 less than I was paying for a three bedroom house. Full house, garage, backyard. But I'm pretty sure that was number five. So fun fact number six, I've had two boyfriends not proud of it not gonna lie i really wanted to be like a one and done kind of girl but that didn't work out i've never pursued guys by the way so maybe i should stop with the whole waiting and not looking thing maybe i should look and i should choose because the ones who choose me just aren't the ones i know that was a bad angle i'm just so tired i literally just want to go to sleep but yeah first one we met because the teacher like pulled up everybody's grades on we didn't even have what did we have back then did they even have like projection screens yet i feel like it's so long ago eighth grade she pulled the grades up on the screen somehow and we were the number two like, highest grade like only ones with 100 percent or something he was like sitting in a couple desks in front of me and i never talked to boys yet so he turned around and he was like oh hey ha ha high five like we're smart and i was like oh my gosh a boy's talking to me and i feel like it was maybe a few months or weeks later he like wrote a note on paper and was like will you be my girlfriend circle yes or no like i said boys had never had an interest in me yet so i was like yes and then you know this is middle school so i think we just like didn't talk for like <laughs> six months no i'm kidding I, i'm pretty sure we talked pretty regularly for eighth graders we did have our first kiss in middle school but it was after being officially boyfriend and girlfriend for eight months and we actually i had the picture of our first kiss but i mean when we broke up, I deleted it, but we ended up being together for eight and a half years and just kind of, I mean, we were, we were so similar when it comes to kind of like a business mindset, but for everything else, <laughs> for everything else, we ended up kind of different and we really just weren't for each other. And then the second one, I'm not filming a video here or anything. Yeah, just walk back and forth, why don't you? Second one approached me at Red Lobster, <laughs> which actually I thought was pretty cute, but that's just, that's not my love story. We have a good amount in common, but again, we didn't, what the main problem I had was that we didn't have like the same goals in life, perhaps. Um, I know I have like some popularity online and I love it. I love having you guys to talk to, but like my dream is not to be famous. I do want to be an actress in something. I just, I don't want to be an actress as a career. I just want to be in like one really dope Disney movie or sh TV show or a Hallmark movie or a Christian movie. Just one, just one really dope thing to say I did it. And that's it other than that i want literally the slowest lifestyle basically i just want like a really chill lifestyle i want to be with family constantly my family and my future husband's family i want us to all to be together all the time and that really just wasn't gonna work out with that situation so from now on if a guy comes up to me first i'm gonna say no <laughs> now that i have two ex-boyfriends I feel like it just makes my value as a wife go down like more and more. I'm sure that's totally not true, but I just feel that way. Like my future husband's gonna be like, how many boyfriends have you had? How stupid are you? How many times did you think you were in love? Which for the record, I did only think I was in love once, but loved them both, which is true. Surprisingly, I was in love with the second boyfriend, not the one I was with for eight and a half years, which is a problem what are we on to now number seven or something seven hmm i am greek and puerto rican i don't know any spanish i hate puerto rican food mom's greek dad's puerto rican and he always calls me his white girl 
it's actually it's like kind of sad but at this point i'm 24 i really gave up on learning spanish i took spanish class in high class i can't even say class i took spanish class in high school for two years tried to talk to him he couldn't understand me because apparently i learned mexican spanish not puerto rican spanish and yeah the food's just nasty so i always tell people i'm greek and it's not to discredit my dad or his side of the family at all but I, can't, I don't want to tell people I'm Puerto Rican because then they're going to be like, oh, blah, 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 and I'm going to be like, no. If they ask me any questions about that culture, I know literally nothing except that I don't like the food. That's literally all I know. There is a lot of, um, surprisingly, there's a little group of a lot of Greek people, so my family hangs out with them. I mean, everyone from like my dentist to my gynecologist is Greek. Um, I personally know the owners of like three Greek restaurants, but all in all, I don't claim Greek heritage at all. Like I'm definitely all American girl, literally wearing my Walt Disney World and American flag shorts as we speak. Number eight, swear I should be considered almost legally blind because I can't see anything. Um, I can see this. Oh, you can't see how. Okay, so I can see this close. That's all I can see perfectly clear and anything past my hand is completely blurry and hopefully I was filming that. So if I didn't have glasses or contacts, I honest, I couldn't do normal daily tasks. I couldn't drive. It'd be very difficult for me to cook. When I take my contacts out at the end of the night, if I don't have my glasses ready right away. Well, you know how there's a little case when you take your contacts out, you put them in the case. So I take like the first one out. And when I put the second one, when I take the second one out and I have to put it in the case, I have to get like this close to the case. So I can see if the contact is actually going in the case. It was so sad. Nobody knew I had a vision problem until, was it eighth grade or high school? I spent a, like half of my school life not seeing like well at all. When we had our little syllabus or whatever it was, what is the little daily thing called that you'd write down? I don't know, when you wrote down like your expectations for the day or whatever that was in your planner, everyone would be writing everything down and they're looking at the board and I'm looking at the board and I'm like, it's literally all white. What are you guys writing? And then I'd be trying to look at the person next to me and my teacher would be like, why are you looking at their stuff? Just look at the board and I'd be like. Also, this is when I started losing friends. They thought I was being rude to them. Um, if we were like out in the quad or in the hallway or whatever and they'd be like, hi, Alexia, bye. And I wouldn't say anything back because I'd look and I could barely see people's faces. So I couldn't, I had, if I didn't know the voice very well, I had no clue who was talking to me. I couldn't see anyone's faces. I'd squint and I couldn't like, I couldn't see anything. So I would literally, out of embarrassment, cause I don't know who said it at this point, everybody's walking. I would just leave, <laughs> just keep walking wherever I was walking. It's really sad. It's really sad, but I wasn't being mean to any of y'all. If that ever happened, like I wasn't doing that thing where people who don't like you act like they don't know you or like they don't see you or like they don't hear you. I really didn't know who it was. I think we're on to number nine now. I really hope I'm not missing anything. Number nine, I did not become a Christian, call myself a Christian or like fully believe in anything until I was 21 years old. My daddy has been religious his whole life. Well, my whole life. I don't really know about his whole life, but I know when he was dating my mom at like 19 years old or whatever, he was already religious. My mom grew up slightly religious, like in churches and stuff, but raised me without forcing me into a religion because that's what happened to her and it didn't turn out well for her. So all in all, I was kind of, turned off by it for a really long time. I even had like a short, a really small alien phase. Ancient Aliens though, that show was my jam. But anyways, my first boyfriend and I ended up breaking up and we had like one huge breakup before our actual breakup. So when I was 21, it was our first breakup and I moved to Florida because we live in such a small town here, literally everywhere I went, was like somewhere that I've been with him or like someone that we know works there or like the gym that we all go to. 
the lake. We only have one little lake here. So it's just like anywhere I went, I was bound to see his truck or his friends. And I just wanted to get out of that. So I moved to Florida to be with my daddy. Ended up staying for three months. And within the first month, he invited me to his church, my dad. So I went and I hated it. I was so freaked out. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is a cult. I was terrified. I swore I would never walk back into that church specifically ever again. Why was I freaked out? Because people were yelling, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They even prayed out loud. My poor dad literally ended up crying because his daughter was telling him, never going to church ever again that was awful i hated it, it so weird it freaked me out keep in mind my poor dad's heart i grew up in vegas with my mom so he always thought i would end up being the most problematic child and just end up like down a road of no return doing the worst thing i actually have always kind of been the best i had like one small phase like my emo phase now when you're 11 years old and someone starts a rumor that you're a lesbian and everyone says it so you start to think you are a lesbian because everybody's saying it that's a real thing but that's a topic for another day anyways i t didn't like seeing my dad cry he said will you go one more time if you still don't like it i'll never ask you again and i had to give him that i love my dad i didn't want him to be upset i went to the church a second time and within the first 20 minutes probably i alexia anist 21 years old was in the front of that stage on my knees hands on the ground crying my eyes out just god take it all away all these people had their hands on me they were praying for me video on like everything that went through my mind and how my life changed after that but basically it ended up obviously very good i ended up going to that church three days a week i looked forward to it so much i got baptized three weeks later with my sister and my dad was there with us and it was just such a special moment and us probably the biggest turning point in my life and one of the happiest moments of my life. We're on to number 10. I really hope I'm not missing any numbers, but I think we're on to number 10 and I'm so happy because I'm really tired. It's 11 p.m. now. I'm really sorry, but I can't think of anything interesting. Ooh, you know what? Actually, I kind of can. I'm going to give you a bonus because I thought of two things. So for official number 10, I have no tattoos, nor do I plan on ever getting one. Oh my gosh, wait. I forgot I can't say that anymore because I have two tattoos. My eyebrows are like, they're tattooed on. Like, this is my real hair, but they're tattooed on. You're only getting 10 fun facts then. Actually, you know what? Number 10, I have two tattoos. And they're on my face. That's what I told my daddy when I had it done. He almost cried. He called me by my first name for the first time in 12 years. For real though, I didn't even think about the fact that he was turning 50 later in the year. And he told me, he's like, you really could have given me a heart attack. Keep in mind, because I know you're probably thinking like, oh, he's a Christian, doesn't like tattoos, blah, blah, blah. He actually is a tattoo artist and I don't know how many tattoos he has, but he has like a sleeve and probably other stuff. I don't know. Is it weird that I don't know my dad's tattoos? He does live in Florida though, so it's not like I see him every day. But so far, it looks like I'm his only daughter that's not going to have any tattoos. So it's just kind of something a little special. I have two heart-shaped heart shaped birthmarks that are, that are like tiny and super cute. So I always felt like that was my special thing and I don't need tattoos. And my other fact that I thought was just oh so interesting it deserves to be a bonus is that i have seven siblings no full siblings i don't have any sibling with the same two parents four sisters from my dad's side one sister from my mom's side and then two brothers by like marriage one's by marriage and the one was my mom's boyfriend that she was with for years i still consider him my brother because we were brother and sister since i was 10 years old and he was probably like eight my brother brian the one that my dad's married to i mean my bro my dad's not married to my brother he's married to his wife who is my brother's 
mom I really need to go to sleep anyways he's the sibling that i'm most like however right now it looks like my youngest sister i mean okay this is so sad at the age she's at now she's the most like me but when she grows up what if she's not like right now we love singing songs and like she plays the ukulele and she taught me a little bit 7 a.m the usual morning line up start on the chores and sweep till the floor's all clean one two three See the light in the sky, just to see if it calls me. We're both the girliest. Most of my sisters are not girly at all. Uh, we're the girliest. We love bows. We love pink. We love flowers. We love doing our hair and our makeup. We love taking pictures for no reason. I'm sorry this was very unconventional. I just woke up in the middle of the night and decided to do 10 facts about me. If you want my little 20 people who watch my videos, feel free to ask appropriate questions in the comments below for a legit q and A. I I would like to do, I'd love to do a 20 questions, but I mean, if we can only do like five or 10, I'd be okay with that. This is a Christian channel. This is a family friendly channel. Keep it G. Keep it rated G. I mean, it can maybe be PG, but that's it. Nothing inappropriate. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you liked any of this. And if you're watching this right now, like you made it to the end of this video, I'm so proud of you. I will see you next time.